Now I'm going to be showing you this, this, this fly. Now the reason I'm tying it is, uh, I mean you've seen the pheasant tail and I've tied with the copper wire before, I've tied them. Uh, and uh, it's one of the most viewed uh, videos I have on, on YouTube. But this fly here, I'm tying some more, I'm tying them in different sizes, as a, a smaller size. Uh, and it's got an unusual colour. What, what this is, uh, it's not pheasant tail, but it looks like it in a wee bit. Uh, I tie classic salmon flies and I use a blue and yellow macaw. You can see it's a natural colour. It's upsetting the camera a wee bit I think. But anyway, it's a blue and yellow macaw. And these are used in horns, for horns on classic salmon flies. And uh, But what you get, now basically these feathers you can see this one's quite rough, but this this feather I actually bought from a, a lady on eBay who has blue and yellow macaws. Now they sell these feathers for lots of reasons, and the reason these were sold was to go towards the church. So the funds were going towards the church, uh, which was which is fine. It's it's used to go towards the care of the bird and all the rest of it. So the, they're just molted feathers. The feathers the birds obviously naturally molt. Uh, you get body feathers as well as you get tail feathers. Now, in this feather, there is a. This is the best side for tying uh, the classic salmon flies and for doing horns. This side here, you can see it's quite weak in colour, though it's still got a lovely yellow on the other side. It's got a lovely grey like colour, which is perfect for tying all of nymphs. It's got a wee touch of blue at the top as well, which you get a hint of that when it's in. You'll see it when it's in the water. Now, I'm going to be tying, I'm going to show you how to tie it now, which mainly is to show you what the, the fibre looks like. And if you come across these feathers, and I'm 99% sure if you do a search online on eBay, you'll find somebody selling these feathers. So you will. Uh, and it's usually that they own the birds and they're selling the feathers to raise funds. So, anyway. Hook choice is up to yourself. I mean, I'm using just a standard full and mill hook. This is a, an all-purpose medium. Uh, this is a size, it's a size 14. The wire I'm using, yeah, I bought a big spool of this wire many years ago, but this is, to give you an idea, this is a fine copper wire. Now, if you're buying it for the fly tying world, it's UTC extra small, it'll give you the same diameter. Now you could change the colours to suit, I mean there is colours that you can, I'm sure you can buy olives and stuff, so it would suit this fly, but as I say I'm just using the copper wire. Now it's important that you use a, like a ceramic uh, tip bobbin holder, this is a full ceramic version, this is the Emco one, the heavy duty. Uh, but there's many out there that are very good for doing it, as long as I've got that smooth ceramic type tip it works. So anyway, what we're going to do is we to start just a head length away from the eye. And then basically, don't take away the waist. The waist piece is your is your rib. So what we do is we come down the length of the thorax. Now I'm going to build it up and add weight to the the nymph by just going back up and coming back down, and then continuing on towards the back of the hook and line with the barb. I usually go in line with the barb, which is about there. Now we just use it just as we would do a pheasant tail fibre, so what we do is we just bring out the macaw. Now in these, I like a few fibres, they're quite thin at the point. Bring them 90 degrees, now there's about, try to count them here, two, four, six, seven or so there. 90 degrees from uh, the stem of the feather, the tips should line up. Once they line up you can tear them away, just bring them together in your fingers. Tail length, you're looking round about the body length. You just put that in your finger and thumb. Catch it at the back with a couple of turns. One, two. See where it is. We can always move them about. It's fine. We're happy with the position of the tail. It's slightly towards my side. So what I'm going to do is just I'm going to actually encourage it to sit on the top. They will try to come with the, the wire. It just sometimes it happens. Just check and see the light. That's fine. And then we continue up with the wire, just as quick as you can. If you want, you can add a wee bit more to the thorax. Basically, where you started is where you stop. 
Now the weakest fibre is the macaw, so I'm going to bring that towards myself and uh, basically wind it up. Now, sometimes I'll put some varnish or super glue underneath, but I prefer to leave it off. Uh, sometimes it's a finer fibre like this, it'll, you, it soaps up into it and you don't want that. So we wind up and actually tapers the fibre itself as well as the, you've got the wire there. Now when you get to the top, you come across, because I'm winding towards myself, come across it and because it's basically you're actually unwinding it you have to lock it in with a turn on to the hook now that's enough to hold it the weight of the bobbin will do that and then we bring our rib up one two three into the fourth turn the remains I usually grab bring it towards the back and then just continue up one two Three through the thro thorax, catch in the waist, and then bring over the rest. Now you can spend a wee bit, a minute or a second or two, just to get these fibres to sit the way you want. I want to see the yellowy, the natural colour as well as the blue. So you can open them out a wee bit. And then, once you're happy, Make sure they're going to sit right before you bring it round. For a couple of turns. At this point you can still move them around even. See the tail. That looks fine. A couple of turns more just to make sure they're not going to move. Going to come in. Trim away. Wind towards the eye, still tying in the, the waist pieces or rib. I'm going to come back up and then I'm going to hit finish. One, two, three. Pull the wire and use your nail to basically put it in line. The way I knew it down now is put my nail beside the wire next to the head and bend and break off so it breaks very close. Yeah, and it doesn't by wiggling it like that it doesn't cause the the turns to come loose, it keeps it nice and tight. And then all you have to do be quick we drop a varnish onto the head, just as you would do normally. All the way around. And there we are. I'm just gonna use a piece of wire to clean out the eye. I put your finger at the end, and there we go. Now I'm going to show you the colour, you can see the colour there. And you can see why it works, it's, it's amazing. Like so. And it's just the waste, the stuff that normally, well I don't throw any of this away as you can, you know. <clears throat> I always find a use for the fibre. And when you get something that's naturally coloured like that, you have to use it. So anyway, there you go, that's the macaw, uh, well, so it's not hard, to, I mean, to call it the macaw pheasant, tail nymph, it's unusual, but it's basically just a, a blue and yellow macaw nymph. Uh, as I say, there's other flies you could tie with it. I've used this material, I've used the same when doing dry flies, it makes a great dry fly body because of the colour. It's per perfect for a, a nice olive pattern. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, as I say, if, if you do see these feathers online, there is a reason normally why they're being sold. And, uh, and it's the owners and the birds naturally, as I say, molt these feathers. So, anyway, again, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.